Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Rami. I am a labor and delivery nurse, second year medical student, a wife, and a mom, and all of my content relates to all of that. So if you haven't already, please click that red subscribe button to join the family. And if you are new here, welcome. Bear is just rolling in the background like crazy. Of course, the moment I hit record, Bear, he totally knows. And Violet is playing in her playpen right over there. So if you hear um, just a baby talking in the background, we just got done taking some pictures at our local city fall festival. I just posted them on Instagram a couple of days ago, so I will insert them right here. Please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Today's video is highly, highly requested. And as you can tell by the title, it's all about how I have a family in medical school. And I'll be talking about when is the best time to have a family in medical school. Just kind of things that you will need, resources and support you will need while in medical school and having a family. And a lot of you guys have been asking me kind of how I balance life in medical school and how I do it all. I'll kind of be touching on that a little bit in this video as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start by saying, and I'm sure you guys have heard this a lot if you are in medical school um, or interested in becoming a doctor, interested in medicine, that there's never a good time to have a baby. In pre-med, while you're in medical school, in residency, there is just never a good time, a perfect time you could say to have a baby and to start your family. So if you do want kids eventually, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that there's never a good time. And honestly, with so many people having ongoing fertility issues as well, myself included, there's never a perfect time to plan to have a baby because babies come when they want to come. If you guys have followed me for a while, you guys know that we were trying to have a baby before I even knew I was accepted into medical school while I was working as a nurse and we tried for quite a while and nothing happened but the moment I got into medical school first month bam pregnant the entire first year and had my baby first year of medical school in April so so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that out there um, whenever you want to have a baby is perfectly fine I'll be talking more towards the end of the video when is kind of the best time to have a baby in medical school or in residency so stick around for that the first thing I want to say if you guys are planning on having a baby sometime during your medical career, whether you are a male or a female, you have to be mentally and emotionally prepared to have a baby. I feel like we were prepared pretty much a couple of years before we even had Violet, um, just because we were trying to have a baby that whole time while I was a nurse. So when I did get pregnant and we weren't expecting to get pregnant at that time, um, we were completely ready for it. We were more than happy and more than ready to have our baby. I would say financially you have to be prepared as well, but there are ways in medical school and in residency to have the financial means to have a baby. So we mostly live off student loans. Um, I do work as a nurse PRN so I work twice a month and we get a little bit of money from that but um, babies in general aren't that expensive I would say the most expensive part is diapers and wipes so if you are pregnant or planning on becoming pregnant make sure you try to have a diaper party because um, clothes aren't that expensive you just wash them all the time I feel like we didn't even use a majority of her brand new clothes that we were gifted just because she grew out of them so quickly we wash clothes all the time like two or three times a week you don't need that many pairs of clothes for a baby just a few outfits here and there I do know that my college and other medical colleges out there will provide a scholarship for daycare and possibly some extra money that'll be taken out as a loan for you to use towards your new baby so you just kind of have talked your financial advisor about that in residency you will be making some money yes it's going to be super low like 50 to sixty thousand dollars a year you will have at least some sort of income in residency to be able to provide for your baby so yeah i just want to end that point by saying you will not be 100 percent completely ready for when baby comes you will never be truly ready and ready for parenthood as first-time parents until the baby is born so yeah we were not ready for sleepless nights waking up every two hours I mean I knew that was coming but it's a lot different actually being in that situation and just being constantly sleep deprived and having to study for exams I did not take a break I did not take maternity leave I had her during my one week spring break and then I jumped right back into online classes and then took my tests with my classmates and just never took a true break I didn't have about two months of that until summer came so I got a nice good summer break um, and I didn't want to be in class during the summer so I decided to just do everything with my classmates and just be on time with everything so 
Um, yeah, just prepare for that exhaustion that you will have. It is pretty much impossible to avoid this exhaustion when they are newborns, when they are waking up every two hours. Um, the best advice I can give is try to put them on a sleep schedule so they quickly know the difference between night and day so they can start sleeping through the night as quickly as possible. Fortunately for us, Violet started sleeping through the night at about six weeks, so I only had to struggle for a little bit until she started sleeping through the night. So um, yes, yeah, she does wake up now and then in the middle of the night looking for her food, wanting a bottle. Um, so yeah, it has definitely gotten a lot better. About six months old now, I have been feeling a lot more normal. So it is doable, it is manageable, and I'm still passing all my classes and doing good in them. So the next thing I wanna talk about and discuss, and this one is really important, is to have a support person for childcare um, while you are in medical school or residency. Pretty much medical school and residency is like going, 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 like you are just going to classes, going to clinic, applying for residencies, entering residencies, and working all these hours. So there is no like stopping and taking a break in medicine. Um, that's why I say it's never a good time to have a baby. It's always gonna be an okay time. And as long as you have a support person with you, it makes all of this a lot more manageable. And for me, that is my husband. He has pretty much been there while I'm in my mandatory classes. Um, and I'm gonna be starting clinic in the next couple of months. And he's just gonna be able to be here and just fully provide care for Violet um, while I am doing all these mandatory things in medicine. So it is great to have a support person with you, whether that's your parent or your significant other, um, or even a friend just to help you out once in a while. If you do need to put your child in daycare, you can put your child in daycare starting at six weeks. So if you do need that option, you can pick a daycare for your child that works for you. Um, at our university, at our college, we do have a daycare that is specifically for the students and staff, and it's heavily discounted. Make sure you look for those options as well if you are thinking about putting your child in daycare. So there are options if you don't have a support person so I'm just gonna end this video with when is the best time to have a baby like I said in the beginning there isn't a best time or good time but there are times where it's not as tough I would say first year and fourth year are the best times for medical students because for some medical schools all the way up into their second year the end of their second year they just have a pre clerkship which is pretty much classes and you take exams and things like that before you enter clerkship or clinical so it was very manageable for me to have Violet in my first year while I'm doing pre clerkship and just taking classes and exams but for our school we start rotations in the spring of second year so that's why it would be more difficult for me to have my baby during second year rotations are crazy hours you do night shift hours um, and you're pretty much just like shadowing doctors throughout the week at various hours so I think it'll be a lot more tougher for me to have a baby during that time especially that I can't just stay home and I would have to make up these rotation hours later on at some point during my medical school career I feel like during pre clerkship is the best time um, to have a baby while in medical school and then fourth year you're just pretty much doing electives applying for residencies you have a few breaks here and there during fourth year so I think if I were to have another kid anytime soon it would have to be in fourth year I don't know too much about residencies to be quite honest and maternity leave I know every hospital is different for maternity paternity leave I know that whenever I worked in the hospital as a nurse they gave six week maternity leaves to parents who had kids while in residency I think every residency is different hey guys sorry my camera battery actually died um, it is the next day but I wanted to finish this video um, on my last point where I was ending off. It's really important to be asking residency directors exactly what their maternity and paternity leave is whenever you are applying for residencies and interviewing for residencies. I'm gonna close off this video with just a few points that's really important if you are pre-med, if you are applying to medical schools at this time, is to look for programs that do not have mandatory classes and that are pass-fail. Because I feel like as a parent, this is really important to help you do well in medical school I feel like I'll be struggling a little bit more trying to study like all day long and be really competitive but it's great just knowing that I just have to study enough to pass and then be able to enjoy my time as a mom I feel like a lot of parents have a lot of mom or dad guilt if they don't spend enough time with their kids but 
I feel like that doesn't happen to me because I feel like I am able to fully balance everything I do in medical school um, while working and being a mom and a wife. I feel like a pass-fail system gives me a little bit more grace to do that. Definitely look into that if you guys are applying to medical school. Unfortunately, I do have mandatory classes at my school, so it is doable if you do happen to go to a school that has mandatory classes. I know a good majority of medical schools actually don't, um, and a lot of it is lectures online. It's definitely doable if you have that support person that I talked about earlier. So you'll be able to leave and go to classes and know that your baby is in great hands. Yeah, that is all the tips I have for you, and I just wanted to make a quick brief video just kind of talking about my experience and kind of how I balance things. In my next video, I'll be talking completely about how I study um, in medical school so make sure you stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you all in the next one bye, bye.